This is so weird being up here. I like to sit in my chair, so bear with me. Usually I am speaking to first or fifth graders, and my messages are about 15 minutes long. So basically I'm the exact opposite of my husband. I'm not long-winded. I say what I need to say, I get it out, and we move on, okay? No shade, honey, no shade. But So anyways, how y'all doing? Good? Looking for my notes. Oh, there they are. Doing good? Okay, I like a lot of these looks that I'm seeing. You all look fantastic, but so, like the really sparkly ones are standing out to me. So I see Zoe on the front row. I see Miss Laura over there. I love it. You guys look awesome. Well, okay, so tonight, uh, Zach asked me to speak. It's been, a, it's been a busy season for him. So he was like, babe, I'm just, we actually went on a date last Friday night. And he was like, I'm just really busy. Like, is there any way that, like, maybe you would want to speak? And I'm like, you mean, like, on Wild Card Wednesday? He's like, no, I mean, like, this Wednesday. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. Whatever. We'll roll with it. So we're rolling with it. Can you guys roll with me? Okay, cool. All right. So a couple of weekends ago, I went on this trip, okay? It was a girl's trip. Now, guys, don't tune me out, okay? Don't tune me out. It was a girl's trip, okay? And anyways, the friend I was supposed to go with got COVID, and she was in quarantine. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go by myself. It's fine. I'm a grown woman. Like, I can go. I went to Dallas, okay? And the whole weekend consisted of all the things that I had pictured in my mind as a teenager of what adulting would be like, okay? So... Um, I could not wait to become an adult. I always thought I knew more than what I did. I thought I was grown from, like, age 12, okay? Like, I had my whole life planned out. I, I was the girl that, like, had my kids' names picked out, didn't use any of them. I was, like, you know, I had my wedding planned. I played MASH more than I read my Bible, okay? So, like, I was always looking forward to the next big thing. So, anyways, I had this, like, really hype idea of what it would be like to be an adult, And it turns out being an adult is not as much fun as what my 12-year-old self thought it would be. But it's still okay. So, but on this trip, I, like, went to Starbucks, like, twice a day. No one could tell me that was ridiculous because nobody was there to do that. Okay, so I went through Starbucks, like, twice a day. Um, I went shopping. I listened to throwbacks on my road trip. I went out to eat. And I ate cupcakes just because. So that is what I always thought being an adult would be like, like on a daily basis. Um, It's not, but it was still a lot of fun. So this conference was called Icing. It was a women's conference. Super frou-frou. It was great. Um, And while I was there, um, one of the speakers was Lisa Brevere. Does anybody know who Lisa Brevere is? Okay, maybe some of the leaders do. I don't know about you guys. Um, She is this Um, really fiery Italian, she says Sicilian, Sicilian woman, and um, she is just fantastic. And so she was speaking on Friday night, and she was talking about identity, and she was talking about truth in this generation, okay? Now I have a question, because we got a few generations in here, okay? I want you to stand up if you're born between the years of 1981 and 1996. So it should be leaders and above, right? Okay, Zach, you were born in 1996. Okay, <laughs> he's right on the cusp. There's like this big debate about 96. Are they millennials? Are they Gen Z? Okay, I guess it depends. You were born in March, so first part of the year, you're good. You're a millennial. Okay, so these are our millennials. Okay, you guys can sit down. Stand up if you were born between the years of 1997 and 2012. Okay, these are my Gen Zers. Okay, represent. Yes. Okay. So you guys can go ahead and sit down. You guys are all Generation Z. Now, how many of you guys think sometimes our generation gets a bad rep? Okay. I've heard um, a lot of times that people think millennials have awful work ethic. Okay. That Gen Zers don't take life seriously. It's not true. Okay. We have a purpose and a calling on our lives from God. And... She said that she speaks at a lot of youth conferences, right? She said that she has people come up to her all the time, and they say, Lisa, I know that there is something significant on the inside of me that God's put 
for me to do on this earth, okay? Like, I know I'm called to something great. I can feel it. And then she's like, that's great. And they say, but I have no idea what that is. Can anybody relate? I've got a hand up because I've thought that thought this year, okay? So, so many times we can feel like a calling of God on our lives or we feel like we're destined for more than where we're at right now, but we just don't have the roadmap for it, okay? And it can sometimes feel like, God, are you leaving me in the dark? He's not leaving you in the dark, okay? God would never do that to you because he's light, first of all. But second of all, he has a plan. He's just not in a rush to show you, okay? The sooner you can accept that, I feel like the happier you guys will be in life. You just take it one step at a time. So anyways, she also said that when people tell her these things, she has a response, okay? And I thought it was amazing, so I'm going to share it with you guys. Okay? Part of the reason you don't know what you're called to do is because you'll never discover who you are called to be by looking at other people. Let me say that again. Okay, You will never discover who you are called to be by looking at other people. Okay, Whether that be in person or on your phones, which is where most of us spend our times, right? Scrolling, looking at people's trips to Bali, okay, looking at... Bali, oh, Bali is this really swanky place in Indonesia, okay? It's like, it's a top travel destination, okay? Disney World, okay? Anywhere that's awesome. You see people's trips. You see these lavish lifestyles. Did anybody see all the coverage from the Met Gala, okay? $35,000 a ticket. You see these people live these incredible lives, and you're like, that's so awesome that they have so much influence what am I doing here, sitting in my room, eating cheese puffs, licking my fingers, being like, it's all right. I mean, right? Like we're judging what they're wearing, what they're doing with their lives. But you will never discover who you are by spending time scrolling, looking at other people on Instagram. That is not a roadmap for God's plan for your life, okay? I want you guys to remember that. You do not discover who you are in the presence of people, but in the presence of God, okay? So, moving on. Unless you've been living under a rock this year, okay, our world's been a little cray for the last two years, okay, going on two years with all this mess of a pandemic and whatnot, okay. It can be kind of scary sometimes in the natural, right. I remember what I was doing when I first heard about the pandemic and I was like thinking like, this is weird. Everyone's like rushing to the grocery stores. Everybody's freaking out. The toilet paper's gone. Like, which to this day, I will never understand the toilet paper thing because like, of all the things you're worried about running out of toilet paper, like, I just, I don't get it, okay? Like, if worse comes to worse, there are other resources, people. Anyways, moving on. I never understood the toilet paper thing. But nothing seems normal, and it feels like your world's kind of turned upside down. And this happened in a time in y'all's lives where you're, like, looking forward to the next step, right? You're looking forward to finishing out high school, maybe starting high school, and everything looks different. And you're, like okay, God, this isn't really how I foresaw my, my high school experience going like the stinks. But let me tell you something. God didn't cause the pandemic, but God's in the pandemic, okay? He's in the pandemic with us, and this is no surprise to him. And he knows exactly what your future holds through it and on the other side, okay? So, I say so a lot. Moving on. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, y'all, so my throat's really, really dry. So I want you guys to turn to a scripture while I take a little sip here. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. If I could get that up on the screen, please. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Okay, and I love it in the message, so that's why I'm going to read it in. It says, but you are the chosen one's by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and to speak out for him to tell others of the night and day difference that he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. That is so good, you guys, so good. Friends, this world is not your home, so don't make yourselves cozy in it. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Dang, like, at me next time, right? Okay, so that scripture is so good. 
And I know sometimes when you're a teenager, like I said, you don't have all the pieces. I don't have all the pieces, okay, in my 20s. You don't always see the big picture of what God has for you. But we have scripture that points us, that tells us what to do to occupy ourselves as we learn God's plan for our lives, okay? This scripture is a perfect example, okay? It's talking about how we've been chosen, how we've been set apart by God. God doesn't choose people that are mistakes, okay? God doesn't make mistakes. He only makes people with his majesty. He considers you a masterpiece, okay? And it's important to remember that this world isn't our home, guys. We're not going to be here forever. We're just passing through. And I know as humans, it's hard to wrap our minds around the fact that this isn't forever, but it's not, okay? God, we are made to worship him forever, but we have stuff that has to get done in this earth before we can do that, okay? And I get tired of the church talking about, oh, well, I just can't wait till Jesus comes and takes me out of here. Okay, selfish. Like, there are so many people in all different corners of the earth. There's people in this very city who do not know who Jesus is. I'll never forget at our old church in our youth group, we had a, uh, a kid he was, had been in church his whole life. He was dating this girl. She had never been to church her whole life. And Zach was giving a message on the story of Jesus' birth. And she had no idea that Jesus was born of a virgin. Okay? And that's, that's totally fine. Like, she's never been exposed to it. But what I'm getting at is I think so many times we think that, like, because people are good people or we see them at you know, school or, you know, hey, like, they have access to Christ. They live in Tulsa. Like, they've surely heard of Jesus. Not everybody's heard of Jesus, okay? So if you're called to the mission field, that's amazing. But start at your schools, okay? Start with your friends because you want to bring those people with you to heaven, okay? So basically what tonight is, is I'm just going to give you a few nuggets on things that you can be doing as you're walking out God's plan for your life, okay? And if you do these things, you will find that he'll begin to reveal steps to you into your ultimate calling and purpose, okay? So my first point is stop the madness. Everybody say, stop the madness. Stop the madness, okay? Stop competing and comparing. I got a story for y'all. Okay. So when I was growing up, I grew up in a predominantly white, wealthy situation. Okay. Um, for those of you that don't know, I guess I've never really like talked about this. My dad is black. My mom's white. Okay. So I grew up with a parent of each color. Okay. I got chocolate and vanilla. So perfect twist cone. Okay. Twist is the spirit. No, I'm kidding. Um, but anyways, I grew up with the best of both worlds. <laughs> Excuse me. So when I went to school, there was maybe like, I don't know, two or three other people that were dark-skinned, maybe. Um, I was a fly in a milk carton. That's what I tell people all the time, okay? I was like the one black person okay, that was around. And some people would argue that I'm not even fully black, but it's okay because Jesus loves me, so you can't tell me that. But anyways, so... I looked around my class, and naturally, as a kid, you want to fit in, right? Looked around my class, all of the girls have blonde hair and blue eyes and, like, this pearly white skin, okay? And obviously, listen, my hair was a mess back then, number one. Like, my mom used to pull back in this tight ponytail, and, like, my curls were all nasty, and, like, I just was struggling back then. I was cute, but I was struggling, okay? Okay. Like, you'll never see me post pictures from that time period. Um, and so I looked around, and I was like, there's literally nobody that looks like me in this school. And I'm like, I think it'd be really cool to be a blonde. Like, I think it'd be really cool to have, like, blonde straight hair that, like, you can just, like, get in the shower and then just let it air dry and it's straight. Like, that would be amazing. Like, those were the things that I thought when I was a little girl, okay? Or, like, to be an athletic blonde white girl was, like goals, okay? You guys, I am the furthest thing, first of all, from athletic. If I tell y'all my mile time that I strived for, and when I say strived, I mean like I gave it my all, you would be horrified, okay? Like I am not a runner at all. My best mile time, now don't, I'm real, okay? It was eight minutes and 20 seconds. That's me giving my all, like my all, 
Like, I thought I was going to die during that mile. That was giving my all. I did not stop. I did not walk, okay? <sighs> Y'all, the mile. The mile. There used to be this kid that used to run the mile in my class that literally used to run like this. Did anybody else have them? Have him in your class? Because he swears it makes him run faster. Aerodynamics? No. Okay. Like that kid was lapping me. Okay. So maybe I should have put my arms back. But like, <laughs> I am not athletic. Okay. I try. I try to stay healthy, but I'm not athletic. Okay. I'm not athletic. I'm obviously not blonde. And I'm obviously not white. So that's a lofty. Like, why would I want to be something I'm not? Okay. Why? But so many times we get caught up in what everybody else looks like around us. It's like what we were talking about. You're never going to discover who you are by looking at other people, okay? So instead of looking at other people wishing you were somebody else, understand that God made you the way he did on purpose, and he does not make mistakes. How many people did the Psalm 139 challenge? Few people. Okay, Psalm 139 challenge. For those of you that do not know, Zach gave you a challenge to read Psalm 139 for an entire week. Okay? Everybody's looking at me like, yeah, okay, I did it. No, I didn't. Okay? That is what the Psalm 139 challenge is. If you didn't do it, you need to do it because it's important. And it will build your confidence in who God's created you to be. But it's, this is why it's so important to limit our time on social media. Okay? And I'm preaching to the choir, y'all. I like Instagram as much as the next person. But it's really important that... Instead of admiring other people's lives, watching people, like, achieve their goals, looking, because so many times we're just looking for community or we're looking for a direction of which way we think that we should be headed, when the only way you're really going to find out is by opening this, okay, and by spending time with God face to face. So limit your time on that and don't compare yourself because really what comparison does is it either puts you above people or it puts you below people. So you're either thinking of yourself as higher than you ought or you're thinking of yourself lower than you should and neither glorifies God or who he's created you to be, okay? So stop the comparison because there is absolutely no competition in God's heart for your place, okay? There's no competition. No one can hold a candle to you in God's eyes. So don't worry about it. Okay, turn to your neighbor and say, he broke the mold when he made you. You look good. Okay, so don't buy the lies. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Next, uh, point number two is secure your identity, okay? You, we need to be renewing our mind daily to the word of God. That may sound super cliche, but I promise you, you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life. So get really good at it now. It's kind of like tithing. If you learn to tithe when you're a teenager, you'll never have an issue tithing when you're an adult. It'll just be like second nature to you. But 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 tells us to take every thought captive. Everyone say every. That means every thought, you hold it up and you say, thought, is this thought from you? Is it from God or is it from the enemy? Is it, does it glorify God's creation or is it dissing God's creation, okay? So many times we can just sit and mull over our thoughts. And I'm totally guilty of this because I'm a thinker. I'll literally just think and think and think and think. Sometimes I won't even listen to music in my car because I'm thinking. Like, Zach, it drives him nuts because Zach is like, he's always blaring stuff. And I'm like, I'll just sit and I'll just think. I think as I drive. Anybody else? Okay, so I'm not alone, okay? I like mull over things. I'm like, okay. But if you're not careful and you just sit, and you go down every, any thought that just pops into your head and you just go down the rabbit hole, you get to a dark place really quick, right? Okay, so you have to start getting good at saying, nope, thought, that's not true. The devil comes in your head. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. He's accusing you, telling you false things about yourself. You say, nope, I know the plans that God has for me. Their thoughts, their plans of good and not for evil to give me a future and a hope. You start, the Bible starts saying, man, you're really ugly. You're really chunky. Anybody ever been chunky? You know what I mean? And you're like, no, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and no one can hold a candle to me in God's eyes. You start throwing it back in his face and telling him, that's not how it's going to be, Mr. Devil, not today, okay? I love that quote that says, 
Satan knows your name but calls you by your sin. God knows your sin but calls you by name. Okay? That's a really good way to identify where these, because there is such a thing as conviction, okay? And there is such a thing as correction from the Holy Spirit from time to time. But the Holy Spirit doesn't accuse you, okay? The Holy Spirit lovingly corrects you to set you back on course, and it always is in line with Scripture. If the thoughts that you're thinking have, you can't find them in the Bible, then it's not of God, okay? And we need to good at I, getting, get good at identifying those, okay? And sometimes when we mess up and we replay those things over and over and over again in our heads about how we've let God down, we think, or, you know, we just can't get out of sin. I went through a time in my high school career, I guess you could say. It really wasn't a career, but, you know, my time in high school. I went through a time where I was making some really bad decisions. And for six months, I did not raise my hands during worship. And I did not pray because I knew that I was not going to stop sinning, which is absolutely terrible. But I was always in the mindset that I had to clean myself up before I came to God. No, 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 no. We come to God first, okay, and he cleans us. He cleanses us. He sanctifies us. You can't clean yourself. You could be scrubbing for days, okay? You're never going to get clean enough to be worthy of God's love. But he doesn't require us to earn it. It's a free gift to us, so we need to take advantage of that. Amen? Amen. Okay. So I want you to remember this. The devil does not have business hours, okay? Okay. So you can take thoughts captive in the middle of the night. In fact, you should, okay? How many of you have ever had trouble sleeping and you're just like thinking about the most awful things, okay? When your flesh is weak and you're just like, you just start spiraling. I actually had to do this a few weeks ago. You just have to grab that thought and say, no, I'm not going down there in my mind. I'm going to speak the word and I'm going to hold God to it for who he is. Amen? Okay. My thoughts. Third and final point is soak, don't strive. Everyone say soak, don't strive. Okay, this is all about spending time in God's presence. Now, if you've been in this youth group for any amount of time, you've heard Zach say, there is no such thing as an awkward moment with God, right? Okay, and it's so true. There's no such thing as an awkward moment with God. I was talking about how you can feel like you need to clean yourself up. God doesn't expect that. You can go to God with your raw emotions. It doesn't intimidate him, okay? God, if you're frustrated, you can't, like, get unfrustrated and then go to God and be like, okay, God, here I am. Like, here's a little perfect me. No, that's not how that works, okay? God knows your heart. He created you. He knows if you're frustrated already, so just tell him, God, I'm frustrated, and here's why, okay? God, that doesn't intimidate him. He wants to be with you. He wants you to talk to him. Just like your earthly father or your earthly mother, they love it when you come and you want to just sit down and tell them about your day, okay? They may play it cool because they don't want to scare you, but they get really excited when you let them into your lives, okay? They think it's great. They want to hear about it. So much more does God want that for us. He wants us to run to him, you know, I also love that other quote where it talks about how um, when you mess up, right, religion versus relationship. Religion says, shoot, I'm in trouble. I need to get away from my dad, right? And then relationship says that, shoot, I messed up. I need to call my dad, okay? My religion is a you feel like you're being accused, right? You feel like God's upset with you, but he's not upset with you. A minister said one time when he was closing a service, he said, God loves you. He's not mad at you. He's not even, he's not disappointed in you. And that meant so much to me, to know that God just loves you. He loves you right where you're at. He wants to connect with you. And he thinks the absolute world of you. So get into his presence because in his presence, there's fullness of joy. There's peace that passes understanding. There's love that's readily available for you. So get over into the presence of God. Amen.